So for the fire brick, we're gonna go ahead and lay it out, just a dry layout to get an idea of our design. Um, I'll put this level at the face of the firebox to give myself an end point or a start point and then work my way back. I'll start with the bottom and do the back and then the side. It's gonna go for a herringbone. <laughs> First time ever doing it, so one of those things I'll probably learn how to do it right and screw it up. <clears throat> for the fire brick, I got them at a local supply store. I'm gonna use these inch and a quarter half bricks. They had it in black, which I think would look pretty nice with the tile that we're gonna do on the, the hearth. Um, we're gonna go ahead and stack these flush with no spacing. Um, try to, these are mitered pretty clean, uh, but we'll try to use the, the edges that are, that are the cleanest. Um, there's some irregularity to them, so gotta take that into account. This step is really all about planning. We're gonna put this tile on the hearth of the fireplace and I just wanna make sure I'm doing the least amount of cuts possible. So if I do two full eight inch tiles, that puts us right you know, towards the back edge of this firebox. So what I'm gonna do, I think is try to slide the brick forward just a smidge to be flush with these side walls, maybe proud just a little bit. And then we're gonna be able to just put two tiles, two full length tiles on the front. Also is gonna work out where I have two full tiles vertically. So sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. So I got all the solid bricks that I can fit in the bottom of the firebox laid out how I like. The rest of them I'm gonna have to uh, kind of cut as we go. Just practiced on a couple pieces um, just to see if I had the right tools. <laughs> so what I'm gonna actually do now that, that I'm happy with the location of everything, I'm gonna go ahead and glue the, the full bricks out and then cut as I go. Yeah, that's the way I'm gonna do it. <clears throat> to glue the bricks, I'm using liquid nails, fuse it. I'm just gonna put little zigzag bead on the back of each one and stick it right down. Always save your little cut pieces. There's always a spot where they fit the last piece on the bottom here. So if you could tell the sides and the back are a little uneven, which is fine, we're gonna overlap them with our back row. So it won't matter. So we're on the back wall, continuing the fire brick. Um, this one you gotta make these kind of unique cuts. It's somewhat challenging. It's like a puzzle. Make sure you're not gluing the wrong side, because I've done that. That would be no good. Coming out, you're gonna probably want a couple wood shims, something you could kind of wedge in there to hold your brick. Dry fit them before you glue them. So for the sides, I'm actually gonna switch up the pattern a little bit. So it's gonna be facing, the herringbone's gonna be going forward, or it's gonna be going this way and this way, as opposed to up and down. I think it'll be a, give it a nice little look. I guess we'll see how it looks at the end.
So for the face of this, I'm just gonna mark my cut lines on the back of these tiles. They're just overlapping the face of the fireplace. I feel like this was the easiest way, so. Just cut inside the line. All right, so our fire brick is complete with the herringbone pattern. Pretty happy how it turned out. Um, a lot of cutting. Uh, did a little bit of a degaff mode and just kind of went for it. Um, so it's a little bit irregular as far as the how the bricks lay uh, next to each other, but I think it adds a nice little little touch. It's imperfect everywhere, so it doesn't really matter. And inside we went, you know, relatively high with the brick all the way up to the chimney and then stopped. Uh, my plumber came and roughed in the, uh, or roughed in, connected the main gas line to the, to the bib that we had sticking out. Um, so I went ahead and connected our gas H burner half inch to our half inch bib and it's connected to a a key valve on the outside of the fireplace so you can adjust the amount of amount of gas that you want into the fireplace uh, a little bit of a whistle hopefully the the fire glass or the fire lava or whatever we decide to put in there kind of dampens that that noise but uh, it's working uh, now it's just a matter of finishing touches there's been a lot going on, so I had to take a little bit of a break uh, from the decorations. So my daughter went ahead and threw up some decorations. There was a bunch of Halloween stuff in the front here before I cleaned it up. But we're going to go ahead and put some cement board on the top of the hearth and then the top of the chimney. Um, that's going to lay our base, our flat surface for our tile. thought about filling all these cinder blocks with concrete, but I think that's just overkill. And I think the half inch cement board will add enough support for the, the tile and be a flat enough surface. That'll also raise our tile up a little bit to be more flush with the fire brick. Yeah, so I'm just gonna glue it down with some uh, construction adhesive. After that's all laid and cut, we're gonna tile again. Um, hopefully it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, well, let's get back to the cement board. <laughs> finally started putting some tile on this bad boy um, got the cement board all secured with glue and did a lot of prep deciding how I wanted to lay out the tile decided the best thing was going to be to start in the corners so the corners are nice and clean and then I'll have to make some kind of makeshift in the middle to to have them meet in the middle got the first couple columns of tile laid out spaced 1 8 I'm using this trim piece it's a similar color to the tile just to to make it look nice i'm gonna go ahead and continue try to bust out this whole hearth today it worked out almost perfectly to be able to stack two two full tiles on top of each other but um it's a little high so what i had to do is trim the best i could take about a quarter inch off of every one of these bottom tiles so that will give us enough space on the top to put our, our trim and then continue our top tile. So let's finish this up. Tough war 
work on this project completed. We finished the tile and the grout. It's turned out pretty nice. I'm glad that I went with the tile starting at the outside and working in. All we have to work with is this little middle piece to uh, combat that inch and a half offset. I got our fire brick, actually put some lava rock in the, the fireplace and I've been firing it up on occasion just to make sure it still works. Last but not least is gonna be the stucco. I was looking to actually hire out someone to finish the stucco. We're gonna go with a white stucco finish, a smooth or semi-smooth finish, but I was quoted at almost $2,000 from like four different people. I am Winnie Daddy DIY, so I will figure it out, I guess. So I'm gonna tackle stucco for the first time. Other than that, we actually drilled the holes that are gonna secure the mantle. I have this extra piece of four by six that um, it's just like very weathered and beat up. I might finish it nice and sand it nice, maybe give it a little weatherproof stain and use this as a mantle for now until maybe I get something a little more pretty. So I got these half inch threaded rods and I took a half inch masonry bit and just drilled holes, three holes at um, just enough depth to give me a good secure fixation for my mantle and this is just temporarily on there right now i probably will keep it that way this will basically just after the stucco is done sit right here and this piece is a little warped i know most of you probably won't even notice but it's one of those things doing your own projects that you're a little nitpicky on it's got character but other than that if you have questions comment down below but Thanks for joining. We'll see you on the next one.